r slash ask reddit what do other people accept as part of life that you personally cannot tolerate long commute to work i work with a girl who drives for two hours each way for work for a standard eight hour working day it takes 12 hours out of her day duck that all the way dead i got a good one I worked with a guy who had been commuting 2 hours one way from New Jersey to Connecticut each day for 20 or so years. One day he sold his house and moved, with his wife, 5 minutes from work. For a couple months he was saying how much better life was, and even for a chill guy he was way more relaxed at work. Then the company merged and the offices were relocated to NYC. So now he was commuting an hour back the other way, closer to the house he'd sold some months earlier. Edit. I feel guilty because sometimes I chuckle to myself about this. There was so much fanfare around his move too. Like he had a housewarming party, and everyday people would joke with him. What time did you get up today? 10 minutes ago. Haha <laughs> his wife would stop by the office with lunch or to say hi. Oh god. Commercials. They're now up to 18 minutes per hour. What the duck America? This is why I don't have cable. I'm not about to pay for what is essentially advertising. It's funny. We used to pay for cable because there wasn't advertising. People being dragged down by family members. Just because they're family you don't have to tolerate their bullshit. Edit. To everyone sharing. Thanks so much. Seems like there are a lot of us out there who think that people don't get it. So we're not all that alone. To everyone who has gotten shit for disowning or estranging toxic family members. Which was me as well. Congrats on having the strength to live your life and not let someone else drag you down. At the end of the day, you're in charge of your own happiness. To any heartwarming stories of I never gave up on them and they came out on top. That is beautiful and I'm happy for you. I'm glad that that person reached the point of wanting to change. Unfortunately, that seems to be the exception, not the norm. Edit 2. To clarify, I don't mean just family you don't see eye to eye with. I mean those people who are making bad decisions and trying to drag others with them. The alcoholic brother-in-law who picks fights at family gatherings. The drug-addicted sister who constantly borrows money, etc. Basically, people you wouldn't deal with normally, but for some reason. When it's family people excuse a lot of inexcusable behaviors. When someone isn't willing to better themselves and constantly takes advantage of you in order to continue their destructive behavior. It's time to say goodbye. Helping them just enables them until they are willing to get help. This is the biggest one for me. And I see it affect everything these people do. In some cases. I don't like FB. Because family. But I have a hard time getting a job. Because no one can look me up and judge me. I make 48k year and live in bumbuck nowhere. But I have to pay for my abusive parents alcohol because what would they do if I don't. So I'm poor as duck. Even though my house costs less than my salary. I can't leave my abusive husband. Because my parents are religious. And so on. And so forth. I don't even know that many people and I still know plenty of folks who are ducked because their parents family are shit. And they think they're stuck dealing with them. People that are listening to loud phone music on public transport. Or walking around talking with their cell phone on speaker because everybody wants to hear their conversation. 5 days on. 2 days off. 5 days on. 2 days off. 5 days on. 2 days off. I can barely take it anymore. Just how ducking mundane it is. If it was 2 days on and 5 days off however. See if your employer will allow you to do 4 10s instead of 5 8s. Even if only every other week. It's magical. Edit. I have heard a lot of interesting anecdotes about how people love hate this schedule. Interesting to hear that some really love to work 3 12s. Not as doable in most industries. But pretty interesting. 4 x 10 flex schedule. Best schedule ever. It's like getting 52 vacation days a year on top of your actual vacation. Having my life be consumed by my job. I'm at that point right now and applying for other positions. I don't live. I suffer through and then I spend my time off healing. I feel nothing but dread coming to work. My health is ducked because of it. Edit. To those of you who are curious as to why I feel this way. I've been teaching for 4 years and I'm finally realizing that education at least in the classroom, isn't for me. I'm not a people person. I'm not organized. I'm not creative. 
It's been a struggle every year, but there are circumstances this year that have made it worse. Thanks to those who have shared their experiences with me, it's good to hear that I'm not alone. My job harasses everyone on their days off for emergency shifts like we're all on call. Don't get paid to be on call so I've started ignoring their calls, texts and emails on my off time. It's not my job to save their poor scheduling skills. This was one of the many reasons I quit my job. Except our boss didn't even have the decency to text call email you. He'd just put you down on the rotor and then not tell you you'd been given an extra shift. The weeks ran Saturday to Saturday. But he didn't work weekend so the new schedule didn't come out until two days later. The rotor was not accessible online anywhere. Only in the breakdown. Often employees who only worked midweek to weekends would get calls asking where they were as their shift was supposed to start some time ago. How can we know that we've been scheduled to work on a day we aren't contracted to work and that no one has notified us about? If you want me to work full time hire me full time. A hole. Don't try to guilt me into working outside my contract. People walking up to you and asking for money and shit. Then act like you are an a-hole for not giving them free money it's like dude. Duck you. Had this woman walk up to me the other day explaining that she needed 5 quid. She didn't really look homeless. But that's irrelevant. Anyway. I gave her a handful of change that happened to be in my pocket which probably amounted to 2 or 3 quid and said that's all I got on me. She looked at me and said oh. I said. I think you mean thank you and walked off. She didn't ducking say anything else. That really pissed me off. Happened to me in downtown Philly. Old rundown lady asking for change. I had probably 2-3 bucks worth of quarters in my pocket so I try to hand it to her. Open palm. So she could see how much it was. And she said I don't want that. Lack of manners. Is it really that hard to be polite? Supermarket deli. Me. 3 stroke 4 of a pound of the chicken please. Dully. Would you like a sample? Me. No thank you. Dully. Here's your order. Anything else? Me. No. That's all. Thanks. Delhi. I think you're the most polite person I've helped today. Me? Makes you wonder how the other interactions went. Hey duckhead gimme a pound of salami. I'll show you a pound of salami. Heat. But it seems to be biological. Pleasant weather for other people is fainting weather for me. I cannot tolerate heat. I live in the mid-Atlantic. It gets unbearable. It hits about 60 and I break out the shorts. Anything over 80 and I'm dying. I'm the complete opposite. As an Aussie 80 Fahrenheit is basically a cool summer day. Almost perfect temp wise. 60 is around our average high in winter and I find it freezing. That's when I crack out the scarf. Beanie. Thick coat etc. I honestly don't know how people deal with colder. Just thinking about snow makes me want to crank the heater and rug up. 6 to 8 hours of sleep each night. In a week. We'll call it 49 hours. 40 hours of work. There's also the time spent getting ready for work and commuting there and back. We can guess 50 hours a week. Assuming 1 hour to get ready and a half hour commute each way. Which is generous. 24 7 equals 168. We only have 69 stroke 168 hours a week that aren't earmarked for sleep or work. If we're lucky, that's only 41% of our adult lives we get to spend living our lives. It's even worse for people with long commutes. People who own small businesses. And people who can't keep their work at work. Like teachers and musicians. And after all that life you're giving up by working full time. It's still possible to be in poverty. Edit. Holy shit. My first gold. Thank you so much. Now at kids. That number drops to possibly single digits. Edit. Damn. Some of you are judgy lol. You mean negative figures right? You said kids. Plural. Living beyond their means. Facebooking their vacations and new vehicles and toys. While their name appears on the delinquent tax list and they have other outstanding bills to local people who have gone out of their way to accommodate them in times of need. This right here. I used to deliver pizza as well and would see this shit all the time. Super shitty house but a real nice car in the driveway and a huge TV. And the duckers wouldn't tip a dime. Talk about rage inducing. One former acquaintance of mine was so awful. He was planning on getting married. Both of them were dirt poor. Working part time to barely pay their rent and food. 
he didn't take a full time job or even more hours at his part time job because he wanted to devote more time to photography, whatever, if that's what you want out of life, good on you. But then they decided they wanted a big fancy wedding. So he goes and makes Facebook posts asking family and friends to donate money for their wedding in advance, in lieu of giving gifts at the wedding. Okay, that's a little different, but friends and family all seem okay with it so carry on. Then Christmas comes and goes. Boxing Day, he has a Facebook post showing off his brand new home theater system that he saved $4,000 on by buying at 50% off. I'm just sitting like, WTF. If I was one of his family or friends who'd donated towards his wedding, I'd have been so incredibly pissed. That working overtime every week is the norm and if you don't do it you are considered lazy and aren't committed to your job. Overtime is actually extremely unhealthy and can lead to stress and a shorter lifespan. Not to mention productivity tends to drop exponentially after 40-ish hours. Some Scandinavian countries do 30 hours a week and say that they don't lose productivity. Honestly at every job I've seen people will bullshit around for at least 2 hours a day. A lot of companies have bosses that will reward you for being there rather than the quality of your work. Getting to work early and staying for a few hours late makes you seem like a hard worker even if you spend half your time on Facebook or chatting at the water cooler. Edit. I'm kinda wrong at it. Top rated comment is something that isn't true and my second top rated comment is why not Zoidberg? Dot. I think I finally understand reddit. That everybody loves to chat and are really super glad when you interrupt them from doing something totally lame like reading or working. Edit. Thanks for the gold. We have a lot of downtime at my job. Right now is one of those. I was trying to read my book. But my co-worker wouldn't shut up about some rich dude who used to work here. So I switched over to reddit, because that requires less attention. Edit. A typo that was just pointed out to me. Edit 2. I work as a delivery person for a school living center for the mentally disabled. It's a large campus and we make rounds to every building. But sometimes there's nothing to take out, like in the morning or afternoon. It's a shitty job with shitty pay. It's just something until I find my way into a labor union. People talking shit about their spouse. I work in sales and have had to walk away from some good sales because some prick wouldn't stop insulting his wife. Guys, if you choose to spend the rest of your life with someone, you should probably treat them well. I had a co-worker who did this every single day at lunch, talking about every dumb thing her husband said or did. It makes it sound like she doesn't even like him at all. I remember working in a restaurant some years back. And the break room would end up full of waitresses bleaching about their boyfriends or husbands for the entirety of their breaks. One fine day, one of our KP guys walked in their mid-session and yelled something like, I swear, you are either the dumbest people alive for staying with guys who are so terrible, or the beachiest people alive for sitting back here complaining constantly about how terrible someone you love is. Either break up with them, divorce them, or else shut the duck up, no one wants to hear you. Some people accept truck bell sacks as part of their lives. The civilization took a wrong turn somewhere on the way. Just once I want to see a truck with the bell sack and those headlight eyelashes. I'd like to see that combo on a Trans Am. Sociopaths as managers. Seriously. There's a reason they got that position. And I'll give you a hint. It's not by helping others. There was an interesting study that showed narcissists were initially well liked and popular when introduced to new groups. Later on people's opinions of them change. You can actually see that kind of thing happening on reality TV shows like Big Brother. Except most of them are narcissists anyway. Being late all the time for everything. I can't stand it. I'm one of those people everywhere 15 minutes early. I understand being late every once in a while. But not all the time. These are the people who laugh it off. It's not funny if you aren't reliable. People who show up early to things I plan, especially things at my house, annoy the ever-loving duck out of me. A few minutes is fine. 15 minutes is ducking rude. It's basically telling the host you should have been ready a half hour before you wanted to be, so that you're not finishing up as people walk in. I'm one of the eternally early people. My general tactic is nip into a shop bar, walk around the block, Killing time is much better than turning up early, or late for that matter. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. 
Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.